Hello, everyone. How's it going? Hope you're having a good uh, Thursday night. The week of live streams continues, and I'm getting a little sleepy. <laughs> I'm getting a little tired. I've, I've uh, exerted myself like every night this week, and it's it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, hope you have had a great week so far. Tomorrow's Friday, finally. Um, tomorrow's also National Bourbon Day. Holy crap. I felt like it was it was just here. So it'll be great. I'll get to uh, stream on National Bourbon Day tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to be recording in the afternoon uh, with very special guests. Um, I think you all know that already. Uh, Dixon's going to be back on the show next week. And very excited to see him tomorrow. What a better, what a great way to uh, uh, spend National Bourbon Day um, with the man himself, Dixon Deadman. And uh, yeah, I'm excited for it. Welcome in, everybody. I'm very happy to see you guys here. It's the usual suspects here on YouTube on this Thursday night. You guys have been super awesome supporting the show all week long. Um, it's just crazy. I This was an experiment that I was like, is this going to work? And I think it's uh, it's gone pretty well. Um, I've enjoyed it. I, I, like I said, I mean, I'm a little, I'm a little groggy from it, but, you know, once a year I can, I can do this and it's fun. I mean, it's not like I haven't had fun doing it. It's just, it's taxing. But anyway, we're not here to talk about my levels of exha uh, exhaustion. We're here to drink bourbon and drink good bourbon. And I figured that tonight's theme, because I, um, I, I won today uh, another bottle of Kentucky Owl Confiscate, and it was in a, a fireball thing. You know those Illinois fireball pick three things? Um, and uh, <laughs> that's from its song. Um, and so I was like, well, now I can drink more of my, my open bottle. And I was like, well... If I'm going to be drinking good stuff, um, I may as well just drink more good stuff. So I figured um, the theme tonight would kind of be high proof, high dollar bottles. And I mean, I don't, I don't always, uh, I don't always do stuff like this, um, where I just kind of treat myself to some, some better stuff that I have in my cabinet. But I figured, why the heck not? So, yeah. Mm. And I'm starting with this blend that Joseph Brazo sent to me, uh, Thieving Vicarish. Um, so let's move this out of the way. It's annoying. It's in the, in the shot, too. Um, heck yes to the shiny barrel. I am, I, I'm excited to actually review it. Um, you guys saw me try it for the first time on Sunday. Uh, when I did the announcement, and I, I knew that I needed time with it, so we're going to actually review it tonight. Um... <laughs> oh, Clifton. That sucks. I'm sorry to see that. Um... Man, I'm so excited for this shiny barrel review. It's going to be real nice. Who caught the... Uh, I know most of y'all did, but um, last night, I think, was one of the better nights uh, for the for the live streams this week. That... Round Robin was so much fun getting, you know, my dad stopped in, Grease from the podcast stopped in, Sarah from Bourbon Night stopped in. It was a heck of a good time. I'm going to be real honest with you. And, yeah. Um, ooh, ADHD Fishing is here for a little bit because of the, um, because the children are allowing it. Hmm. I think I'm gonna hold on. Oh man. Readjust the the screen a little bit. There we go. Um Bourbon Buddies, I am pumped for it as well. I don't think I have anything new to talk about other than that uh that confiscated bottle. Um just just because you guys have been here for all the <laughs> all the all the new fun stuff. Um, that's been going on this week, but I'm trying to think. <sighs> yeah, 
I'm pretty spent on, on news. Tomorrow's going to be great. I'm just psyched as can be for tomorrow. Earthquake. <laughs> That's funny. Well, I'm ready to finish this and move on to something a little bit higher proof. But let me tell you, Joseph Prezo, killer. It's really freaking good. I enjoy the crap out of it. Mm. How about, because it's fresh on my mind, and I'd like for it to be fresh on my tongue, um, that sounded weird. We go with the Kentucky Out Confiscated. Oh, I'm so excited for Beagle Rare. <laughs> oh, man, that's going to be great. A great, great thing that we get to do. I'm going a little heavy on the on the Kentucky Owl tonight, by the way, because, like I said, new bottle in possession. So, heck yeah. I'm hoping that this other bottle's cork doesn't break, and I have this feeling like it's going to, um, because... I, they they tend to they tend to break. Um, Cletus's cork broke. Cool. Um, yeah, Eric, that's what she said. <laughs> uh, Donnie might have a chance at uh, at an Elmer T. Lee tomorrow. Ooh. It's been a hot minute since I've had uh, a bottle of Elmer T. Lee. Um, like we kind of talked about on, I think it was this week's episode, uh, Swan got me my first bottle of Elmer T. Lee. First and only bottle. Actually, I don't think that um, I don't think that I've had one since then. But, yeah, excuse me. Let me do a little something here. Hold on. Just two seconds. I apologize. I'm moving, I'm moving around a lot. Don't, don't mean to. Oop, oop. I don't know how I did that. Interesting. Okay. Um, sorry. <laughs> A synthetic one, bro. Uh, yeah. Apparently, it's um, it did uh, it did break, and they've been having a little bit of a trouble or a little bit of a problem with it, rather. Um. Um, Brian said, I could have gotten a second confiscated for 130 and passed. It's been hard on my bourbon budget this week. Understandable. I saw a, um, is that what I saw? No, I didn't see Blonde. No, I don't know what I'm thinking of. <laughs> yeah, how did everybody like the sweaty corn chip review of, uh, of uh, uh, Riviera, Redneck Riviera, the worst bottle known to man. Put that on your label. It'll sell like hotcakes. Or whatever whatever the opposite of hotcakes is. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Joseph's going to be tripping down Whiskey Row by this time next week. Oh, that's... um. That's fair. Yeah. Hey, this Kentucky Owl Confiscate is real nice. Some real good stuff. Just, man, it's just taken me back to Whiskey Weekend Batch 1. Batch 1, excuse me. It's just reminds me of all those wonderful, wonderful memories. Um. Oh, he's been buying plenty of other bourbons. Well, that's fair, Tim. That's fair. Yeah, there was a lot of snorting in this episode that came out yesterday. Um, Ian asked, why does my comment not show up? I don't know what you're talking about, bud. Um, how's it compared to the white bottle? What's, what? What? I don't know what that question means. Um, oh, man, I can't wait for the Elmo T uh, 100 proof. That's going to be... Delicious. Head to head Riviera versus J.R. Ewing for science. 
That would be great. That would that would be the worst thing I've ever done in my entire life. Oh, Dram Man KY. Hello, sir. Hope you're well. Oh, Steven, you gotta get in on Whiskey Weekend Batch too. That's I mean, you know you know based on my stories and hearing stuff from, from Will and the Grease, just how insane batch one was. Batch two is gonna be legit. It's gonna be way crazier. I don't know why I just said legit, because that sucked. That that sucked a lot. Um <laughs> Oh, the ceramic white bottle of uh, double oaked bourbon I have. The Spring Mills. It's just, um, hmm. I mean, I don't want to drink it, but I'm curious now. Huh. I might have to. I might have to compare <laughs> or break it back out sometime just to just to try and see what um what I think about it. Um. Mets are beating the Cardinals. <laughs> no, hate that. Hate that. Um, that puke that came in the white ball. Oh, that's what you're talking about. You're talking about the uh, the spring mill. Yeah. Dad's in here. Hello, Dad. Um, oh, yeah, that's a good call, Ian. That's a great call. Um, very happy Papa Ritter's here. Hey, Joseph, by the way, I got the package that you sent for... Um, uh, for Sarah with an H, like meaning my sister. I don't know what you sent her, but I'll I'll give it I'll give it to her on Saturday. <laughs> Not sure what's going on. Oh, hello, Lil. Happy Friday in Australia. Australia. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do Australian accent. It's more it's more tazzy than it is uh, Australia. And I'm gonna stop that right now. Stop that dead in its tracks. Um, <laughs> one of the two Aussies are in here. Um, yeah, 24, 25 people. This is kind of nice. We don't normally get this high. Um, I'm seeing 26 even now. That's nice. Maybe, uh, maybe I should do a week of live streams every week. Or maybe I shouldn't because that sounds terrible. That would suck. <laughs> Oh, that would be terrible. I would never I I would I would hate that. Yeah. Golly, y'all, there's a lot of people in here tonight. This is nice. I'm I'm happy that you guys are here. Don't do it, Chad. Yeah, I won't I'll, Chad's got no shame. Chad was almost on tonight, by the way. Um he got caught up at work and unfortunately he couldn't make it, but we keep trying to plan for him to be on. And it's just, it's it's just not worked out. The Bourbon Road's here. Great new Bourbon podcast, by the way. Go listen to the Bourbon Road. That's my tips and bits. <laughs> um, last night wore you out. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> uh, Swan said, "Dip into that rare burrito left over." It's uh, oh, it's right there. Might just do that. Can I do it? Oh, skill. That was sick. <laughs> oh, man. Um, what sounds awful? Doing a live stream every night or my Australian accent? That sucked. Um, <laughs> uh, so Swan left over this uh, wild turkey rare breed. Uh, that's 108.2 proof. I don't exactly know when it's from. Oh, uh, 2003? This is an 03 bottle. Um, yeah. <laughs> Joseph. <laughs> 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 Woo! Okay. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Don't, uh, that's a uh, comment, comment of the night, comment of the night. So far goes to Joseph Brazo, um, telling Joe, uh, uh, Clifton that he would be his right hand man. 
can't even I can't even say it without laughing because it's just perfect. It's just too perfect. My hair it keeps driving me crazy tonight, and I don't know why. There's plenty of shots for y'all to take. Hmm. Dram man, I didn't even know that uh, it, uh, Jason did a, a, a 1792 pick. I had no idea. Hmm. Hey, Eric Jansen's here. Johnson? Jansen? I'm going to go with Johnson. Johnson. You got to put the h into it. <laughs> Feeling good tonight. <laughs> Feeling good. Feeling strong, my friend? I'm feeling strong tonight. Yeah. Um, uh, great workout tonight. Dad, I was very tired. And next week's going to suck even more because, yeah, you know. Dad, gum it. Confiscate is so good. Why didn't I put the bottle up? I always do that. I keep forgetting to do that. There it is. Kentucky Owl confiscated. Um, oh, it was great, and he gave a bottle away last night. Well, that's awesome. I would love to try that sometime. I'll just ask. I'll just ask Jason. <laughs> Strong like bull. Yes. Don't know my Russian accent appropriate. Um. Um, after the rare breed, drink some B519 with me. I don't have any B519. I would love to have a bottle of it, but I cannot find it anywhere. And that doesn't make me very happy. That makes me a sad pear bear. But it is what it is. Um, but so low a proof, it's still good, man. I like I I want to defend it. Like I know how how much flack it's catching because of the proof and because it's not age dated and because it's so expensive, but I still really like that this bourbon. I, I think it's good. Oh my Russian accent's great. I like my Russian accent. It's one of the things I pride myself on. I mean it's it's on my resume. I tell people, when, when people say, uh, tell me three interesting things about you, I say, well, I, I do a bourbon podcast. I married my high school sweetheart. And my Russian accent is fantastic. See? <laughs> uh, Swan did legs tonight. Trying to bulk up these swan legs is difficult. Swans have those little tiny, like, stick legs. Um, uh, Donnie want me asking if we want to bring me a B519 to Southern Whiskey Society if we find one. I'm going to say soft yes. Unless I find, if I find one before then, no. Unless it's just amazing. You know what? All right. Yes. Yes. The answer is yes. A thousand times yes. Um, Eric just doesn't like it flat out. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, Ian said he's already bringing uh, dust in a bottle of something. Do you want me to bring B519s? Only 53 with tax in Ohio. Yes. 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 Okay. Sorry, Donnie. Um, Ian's, Ian's got a real good deal for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> Swan. <laughs> Look, man, swans are just born with stick legs. I can't, I, I'm not calling you out for it. It's just how it, swans are built. So. <laughs> what a weird night it was like a weird night it's been a weird day so here's how weird my day has been today um i i got into work and i found out that ups some of the higher ups from ups were coming to our office today to have a meeting and I originally thought that the meeting was going to be with our company um not something no it was an internal meeting so my company wasn't involved at all with this meeting it was very strange 
And then I was told to, uh, how weird was it? It was so weird that, um, um, I, I don't know. I don't have anything. Um, <laughs> anyway, I, so then I was told to, um, mock up and knock off of their logo, um, with our initials for our company incorporated into it. And so it said, what can URM do for you? Upper right marketing. And I was like, this is weird. And so it went, it went on a, a coffee mug and like a t-shirt. I was like, this is strange. Why am I doing this? Then one of the guys from UPS comes into my office, stands in front of my desk. I'm ready to stand up, shake his hand like you normally do with people you've never met before. He puts his hand up. He's a big dude, by the way, too. I mean, his hand's at least like three times the size of mine. And he puts his hand up and he goes in for the high five. I'm like, I don't know you. I've never met you before. Why are we high-fiving in my place of work, acting like we're old bros just seeing each other for the first time in a while? I was like, what is happening here? <laughs> it was the strangest interaction I've had with, a, with another human being in a really long time. A really, really long time. <laughs> um, did the UPS meeting deliver on expectations? I don't know. I wasn't, I wasn't there for it. I, I mean, I was in the office building but i wasn't in the the actual meeting room um did i just go 90 sketch comedy there uh absolutely i did um could i take him no i couldn't take him <laughs> he was a big dude <laughs> i saw him and i was like oh <laughs> hey man <laughs> am i getting bought out by ups I, maybe i don't know um ups people are weird perry you should know <laughs> um, was I worried it was a setup to investigate that the olive oil I've been shipping wasn't really olive oil? Maybe. Um, you got to give him a Borat high five. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Um, oh, Tammy. Tammy, I hate that comment. <laughs> oh, I hate it. That sounds gross. Um, Joseph said, "Gotta warn you, uh, uh, I'm a hugger. I'm a hugger too. I don't. I'm not a high fiver unless, like, I mean, I know you. That's fine. Or, I don't know. High fives are different. High fives are like, we've had a good moment. It's not like an introduction to somebody else. You know, it's not like you've walked into the room and you see this person that you've never met before, and you're like, hey, buddy, how are you doing? <laughs> like, all right, um." Yeah. <laughs> Brian said this is the most fired up I've seen you in a long time. It's been a weird day, man. <laughs> like, I I deserve to be a little bit fired up over the insanity that I've... I don't know. It's just been weird. <laughs> UPS people don't know boundaries. I don't know. I don't know how to... I don't know how to respond to that one. Um, Can I get some of those sweet brown shorts? No. <laughs> it's funny, though. Uh, was the guy in the suit? Yes, Donnie, the guy was in a suit. Uh, he was two of the nines. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, yes, Berlioz, I know. Um. <laughs> Berlioz. Nah, he was talking to me a second ago. He's not anymore. Um. No, oh, there he goes again. Yeah. <laughs> cute kid um yeah i know right y'all seen that video of the of, like toddler sitting on the couch with his dad and he's just having a conversation like you can't form words and his dad's just like having a full-on conversation with him very funny it's really adorable um but yes ian i am a hugger um did i leave him hanging or a high five back i had to high five back i mean i was already in motion to like stand up and give him a handshake so it just naturally was like, oh, okay, here we go. <laughs> there was no getting out of it. Um, it is more of a bro thing. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> yes, Ian. I did say that. Um, what can Brown do for me? What can Brown do for you? Um... Oh. <laughs> Urban buddies, this sounds disgusting. Why would you do that? 
Nobody does. Nobody does. Nobody does that. Nobody does that. Um, you might be a secret admirer of the channel. Well, fair, fair enough. Um, Pear Bear and his snorts. Sorry, didn't start until I, I started dating my, um, uh, dating my wife. Um, the Perry snorts the new drinking game. Ah, fair, fair enough. Uh, Swan said, "Perry, I love your cats. Feel free to elaborate to the people that story." So, um, yeah, let's let's talk about that. Um. Oh, Diana Webb's in here. Hello, Diana. Diana and Donnie. That's a great couple name. Um. So, anyways, <laughs> Swan loves our cats a lot. Um, I mean, like so much so that a few, a couple weekends ago, a couple weeks ago, I can't remember. Um. Swan was over. We talk about it a little bit on this week's episode. He just would randomly, like, we'd be in the middle of a conversation. We're sitting on our, on our couch downstairs. We're sitting we're sitting there, and um, sometimes mid-sentence, too. Swan would turn around, look at the cat tree, just kind of, cats! And would just jump up and, like, go to see them. This happened multiple times during the evening. I was like, Swan, what are you doing? Oh man. Oh, Robot Scott's in here. Hello, Robot Scott. Um, who else has just joined? I'm seeing Michael Hassett. Michael, it's been a while since I've seen you, friend. Hope you're doing well. Buffalo Trace White Dog Mash Bill 1. Interesting. Interesting. Uh Jason said, one off the awkward high five with a manly hug combined with a delicate nose in his head. <laughs> And then you go, you just lean into his ear and you go, you smell better when you're awake. And you just walk away and it's just. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Okay. Uh, Joseph, are you seriously still dry this week? Interesting. Hmm. I probably fit, uh, should have finished this confiscated. It's almost been thirty minutes, and I've I've had two drinks. That's not how this this live stream goes. Uh, it's usually I just go bananas, but maybe not tonight. Um, Lucy wanted to know how the stream is. If it, okay, so I want to tell Lucy how the stream is going. It, sum it up in five words. How you guys think this stream is going? Because I, w- I want to, oh, oh, it's not, not it's not, ugh. Um, oh, nice. That's awesome, Scott. Very nice. Not snot. Bottled chug it. Um, oh, bananas. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty bananas in here tonight. Um. You seriously want me to bottle chug? I uh, beans. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> because Steven said I should, and because I also have another bottle, and because it's been a long week, and I'm not taking myself too seriously tonight. I can only do I can only do one bottle chug. I can't bottle chug the rare breed. All right. Um Clifton I I liked your uh I liked your one the best. Um how's the stream going? Must be in the form of a haiku. Um 
<laughs> Perry's fired up. Um, yeah, I'm I'm pretty fired up. The the high five just sent me into this weird funk. Um, I'm telling her I asked the viewers to sum up the live stream in five words and that was one of the best i got also perry is on fire tonight for some reason my phone capitalized fire not sure not sure why roll that beautiful bean footage <laughs> <laughs> uh Perry's chugging. I chugged one bottle. And I'm it's just now hitting my my stomach and my adrenal glands and I'm like, Bleh. is that the right thing? Does bourbon have anything similar to the adrenal glands? I don't know. Uh Brian said we need more high fives in our meetings at work. They're overrated. I'm gonna be honest with you, they are superior wait, wait, no. Soup. Super overrated? They're super overrated. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cats, beans, bananas, UPS, snort. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I still got 30 minutes of this nonsense. You people push me to be <laughs> weird. Okay, um, next in the high dollar, high proof, I went with, uh, with the 2018 William LaRue Weller because I figured that was appropriate. Especially in this setting. I'm not going to uh, parry pour the, uh, um, the, the WLW. This is 125.7 proof. And I'm going to put it up in front of the camera because I keep forgetting, like an idiot, that that's the thing that I do. Whatever. Um, saw the stag. You saw the stag junior behind me? What am I doing? Where am I going? Or did you see the stag itself? Ugh. Let me just sip of water in a in a pause. To actually catch my breath. But yeah. Um oh you said it was uh I I W L W. Okay, I got you now. I got you. <laughs> this one says snorting beans and venom cats. That's what Tim Bip is about. High dollar, high proof, high five. All right, I'm going to change the name of this uh, this live stream to High Dollar High Proof High Five. I think that's that's solid. Jason, you are a marketing genius. Did Dad leave? I haven't seen Dad in here in a little bit. Um, yeah, I, Tammy said, oh, yeah, because, yeah, it's good. it deserves that. Uh, Joseph said, finally tried it. More savory than I thought it would be. Um, Brian said, I'm dry, but you may make me bring... The Booker's 30th. Lucy asked, why am I on fire? Um, and I said, because I got a little riled up. And they thought it was funny. <laughs> so I guess every, every Thursday night live stream now, I have to bring this kind of energy. So I've got to report to you guys now weird, weird things that happen to me. Um, at work so yeah i am not chugging the wow that is not happening <laughs> um a bean cat t-shirt would be awesome could do that could definitely do that um see the wow in my dreams i do too have i heard knob creek that is getting its age statement back yes i have i actually saw that like just before i got on the on the podcast or excuse me on the live stream um, said he was coming back. Okay, well, fair enough. Um, great new name. <laughs> high, 
Wait, okay. It was high dollar, high proof, high five. Okay, great. Um, did anybody see that Bakers will become a single barrel and Knob Creek is getting his age statement back? Okay, so Donna, you asked um, one thing that's already been uh, brought up, but something else that has not been talked about yet, that Bakers is going to be uh, a single barrel. I was under the impression that it was going to be single barrel picks of Bakers, which I'm kind of surprised that people haven't done before now. Um, I am all about that. I think that would be really cool. Seven years old at least. Um, 107 proof. I mean, it's the high rye version of uh, uh, 107, Weller 107 picks. You know, I think it's something that the market's kind of been missing, and I'm really excited for it. So, um, uh, Brandon is talking to Brian Allred, so I'm going to move on. Trevor Wilson's here. Hi, Trevor. Or hey, Trevor. Yeah. Um, Trey, man, I, I'm not part of that, uh, Discord, sir. I, I, um, yeah. Would you send me the, the link to that, please? I appreciate it. Um, will all bakers be single barrel or will a single barrel bakers be offered with a small batch? I don't know for sure. I don't know. Um, is the age statement on a small batch because a single barrel still says nine years? I'm not sure. I honestly don't know that I I would have to ask somebody at, at Beam about that. Um, you know what? I haven't given Beam a lot of time on the podcast. I would really love to have somebody from Beam on. I just saw we were at thirty viewers at once. That's fantastic. Thank you all so much for being here. Um, but yeah, I would I would have to ask them that question, Ian. Uh, Baker store picks sound awesome. I agree. Uh, Baker's gets overlooked a lot. I uh, totally agree with that. I think Baker's is one of the best pours um, on the uh, on the market right now. Oh shoot, shoot. Uh, all right, all right, good. We're good. Um, Lilith said we met Baker Beam at Fred Nose House two years ago. Well, isn't that special? No, actually, that's really cool. I like that a lot. <laughs> Never had regular bakers any good. Yes, Michael, regular bakers is phenomenal. Seriously, it is. I'm not sure what I think about bakers picks. The Knob Creek picks are amazing, and I like the higher proof. I like the higher proof as well. Um, but, uh, Joseph, I didn't mean to hide your comment. And I feel like a jerk about that. Um, if I could get Freddie No on the podcast, that would be awesome. I would love to have both Fred and Freddie on the podcast. Lil, Lilith, send, send, send me the info. I need, I need that. That's the end that I need to get into, um, get into Jim Beam. That'd be cool. Um, Trevor said pretty much a huge fan of, uh, every single barrel or every single one of their products, even their sub $20 offerings. I honestly have really come around to Jim Beam white label. I don't think that it's as bad as some people kind of claim for it to be. I think that it's just, it, it's, it's the everyday version of the the product that everybody touts um, as being fantastic. So I I mean I I get it. Do I like it? Not necessarily, but I I think that it's still good. I think it's good. Also, I have a pour of WLW that I haven't even gotten to yet, and I still have a review. So we might be going into overtime here. We we might be going a little bit later than normal. I am interested how the 13-year Bakers will compare to the 14-year-ish Knob Creek store picks. That actually would be a really cool side-by-side -side to do, uh, especially since it's the same same distillery. Uh, and I, I, you know, be good. <laughs> Jim Beam's good in Coke. Yeah, that's that's fair. That's fair. 
Basil Hayden is the weak point of Jim Beam for me, but I don't feel it's meant for me. I don't know what it is about Basil Hayden, even though it's the same proof as Jim Beam White Label. Like, why is Basil Hayden so much worse than Jim Beam White Label? I don't, I don't understand. Like, it's the same proof, not necessarily the same age, but, you know, it's had just about as much water added to it. So, I don't know. I might have to do a side-by-side of those as well. I just don't want to shell out the dollars that that Basil Hayden actually requires to purchase. It's just a lot for a little. You know what I mean? It's a mountain for a molehill. All right. All right. I'm picking up a tobacco note that I've never gotten on WLW before. Which I really don't normally get with with weeded products either. But it's definitely present. This has had so much time to open up. He's back. Dad's back. Um, yeah, it's opened up so much since I had it for the first time last year. And it's so good. I, 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 I don't think that it's better than the 2017 i think 2018 is sub not subpar i would just say it is less it's not as good it's just not as good as the 2017 but this has had so much time to open up and it's really done it justice i would say it's really done it justice at this point um just a good bottle man I mean, it, it it should be at this price. It should be at the proof and the age and everything. It, it's just, I think this is one of the bottles that lives up to the hype of maybe not secondary prices, but I think it lives up to the hype of it's, it, it, it's, an, it just, it's hype. I think it just lives up to it. I think that's what I'm trying to get at. Um, yeah, it's just, it, it's a really great bottle, and I have no problem with it. I really don't. Yeah, yeah. Dang it, it's so good. I don't even know. I'm not entirely sure of the age on this one. Um... Yeah, this uh, this one doesn't have an age on it. I think I remember it being like 12 or 13 years old. Um, if anybody knows what the 2018 WLW age is, please let me know um, because that is a blind spot for me. You can even tell like in the bottle. And I mean, it's way more evident in the glass um, as you kind of let it rotate a little bit. Um, it's really oily. I mean, I, I can see the separation almost of the water and the bourbon just in the bottle. I think that's wild. I think that's really wild. Um, love the color on the WLW. Yeah, I did, I did, I did. Um, how long has it been open for, Brandon? It has been open since uh, November or December, I believe. So, I mean, it's been a little while. I, 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 Matt said should be 12. Um, 
Why, why are we talking about the sample box right now? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm the worst. I really am. I'm, a, I'm, I'm very sorry that it hasn't made it better. I'm trying. I keep trying to find time for it. But, oh, 12 years, 6 months. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, man. I think that um, a cask strength Weller 12 is just... It's just right. I really do. I think that's exactly where um, this product should live or can live. But it, it's just... It's good, man. It's just good. Um, and you know, like any anywhere from, I'd say one twenty five to one thirty, on the proof. I think that's probably the best. Maybe not the best, but that's where I prefer that proof to kind of be. I introduced that two nights ago. So, you know, <laughs> that's for that's for the uh, completionists. Um, what's in the sample box? Dad, we'll talk about it later. I don't want to talk about it right now. <laughs> uh, Brandon said, I'm super weird about bottles being open for too long. I usually only have a few bottles open. And they are going within a month or two. I just, so I don't like... I'm okay with certain bottles being open for less than what this has been, but like I am of the persuasion that bottles that are special like this should be savored and should have time to express themselves. And I mean, I think that the antique collection is pretty indicative of that. Honestly, um, it just seems to be synonymous with allowing a bourbon to open up. So, this is a sipper's bourbon for sure, though. I mean, th there is no way around it. I, you know, what Berlioz? came back there's no way around it i mean it, it it's a sipper there's i can't shoot it of course i couldn't do another bottle chug of this i'll say that much um michael said it had the 2018 wlw and gts side by side stag one out for me i i i mean i like the i like the 2018 stag way better than i do the 2018 weller but i'm not doing these two side by side currently um, this one in particular, I think is absolutely delicious. And I mean, I missed out on a significant portion of the antique collection. You know, I mean, I, I haven't had the first couple of years of it. I haven't had, um, I mean, really anything pre 2017. So my, my spectrum of appreciation and understanding is so limited to a couple of uh, really just a couple of years. Is dad leaving? Oh, that's, that's cool. All right. Bye dad. Bye, dad. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it, I, I have a very limited understanding of what the antique collection is like. Are the first couple of years great? Maybe. I, I really don't know. I would love to find that out at some point. Um, I don't know exactly how I got on this train of thought or this rant, but that's where I am now. Um, sorry, I think I missed something. Nah, I don't think I did, actually. Um, yeah, it's just... From, from, what, from what I can glean, it's really good. I think that's just what, what I'm going to stick with. So, there you go.
think I caught something in my eye. <laughs> Yeah, that was weird. Oh, man. The finish on the, the WLW 2018 is one of my favorite parts. If if honestly not my favorite part. I think that it just takes everything that is great about the palette, expands upon it, continues it um, into this really nice, well-rounded flavor profile. I kind of feel like I should go back and revisit this or review it um, at some point. But uh, Swan's got to go. Bye, Swan. Things not better go to crap after you leave. Um, <laughs> Ian, I am the exact same way with laundry. It just sits in a pile. I mean, like, I pff, folding laundry, that's for the birds. Literally, in this case, because he's a swan. Um my joke for the night that's my one joke yeah but i do i do still have a review that i need to get to i'm gonna do that here in a second i gotta clean out this glass should probably have a little bit of water just so that i am fresh to death for this review can't believe i said that either mmm Caramel flavored water. That was yummy. It's my way of getting the, uh, or one of my ways, getting water out of my Glencairn um, before I get to the actual tasting. Yeah, so good enough. But we have business to cake to. <clears throat> we have business to take care of. And I am reviewing the 2019-02 Booker's Batch Shiny Barrel. This is 124 proof, age 6 years, 5 months, and 1 day. Um, I have the card that goes with it over here as well. I won't read any of the tasting notes or anything just yet. Uh, it, it, this is a really interesting Booker's release for me because usually it comes from like five or six different w warehouses or like six or seven. Um, but anyway, so it is 18% from the sixth floor of nine story warehouse D, 39% from the fourth floor nine story warehouse E, and 43% from the fourth floor nine-story Warehouse J. So the majority is from Warehouse J. And it it's so interesting to me that it's three distilleries instead of like the six or seven that normally go into a batch of bakers. So, or bookers, excuse me. Here's the thing about this batch. This was the batch that everybody said or kind of assumed was going to be just like center cut because it was taken from the same general areas that center cut was as well. Um, I liked center cut a lot really did um i have had this now this will be my fourth time having this bottle if it's as good i it, just in terms of what i you know prefer um i'll be surprised but at the same time i think that this has a really good fighting chance um, so, yeah. Did I say distilleries? I'm sorry. I meant Rick Houses. I apologize. I didn't even notice. So, let's talk about the nose. So rich. 
with a with 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 tobacco and leather. I think that's really kind of my predominant note that I'm finding uh, on the nose here. There is definitely some dark fruit that's taking a back seat. Fairy? Yeah, fairy might be part of the uh, part of the crowd tonight. Um, but who's to say? Anyway, there is a dark note that is definitely taking a back seat to some of the um, kind of earthier notes that I'm getting on the on the nose. Yeah, that berry note kind of comes out a little bit more the the more that I dive into it. It's it it's reminiscent of, um, <clears throat> you know those, the the, are they Welch's? Is that what it is? Um, those fruit snacks. Uh, it it kind of smells like that artificial, like, berry or like grape kind of note, um, that you 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 taste with those. So I think that might be oak that I'm actually picking up on. Yeah, I think it's I think it's oak. So I'm getting a lot of really dark notes on the nose for this one, which is interesting because I mean it's it's not super old as far as uh, Knob Creek or Booker's or just Jim Beam in general um, kind of goes, but it's. It's really good, though. I mean, I I really enjoy the nose. Little bit of an ethanol sting, just a hair. I mean, not not enough for me to be deterred by the by the rest of the nose. Some slight citrus on the on the top of the nose as well, but. I think I'm ready to go in for a taste. Man, a little bit of that went up into my nose. Woo! Oh, man. Oh, that is so good. Oh! What the heck? So, I'm getting this buttered popcorn note. I'm getting dark caramel as well, I think is what, what I'm, what I'm finding on there. There is a really interesting floral note that is rose centered. I think it's roses. I think it really is roses. Um, the oak pushes its way through, um, but uh, this this palette has so much depth to it and it's interesting because i mean it it honestly did take me four different tastings to appreciate and understand what this bourbon actually is because on Sunday night, when I tried this for the first time, <clears throat> I don't think that I would have appreciated it nearly as much or enjoyed it nearly as much as I do right now. Uh, Donnie asked, or well said, if you tell me this is worse than Teresa's batch, I'm going to be upset.
The answer is no. It is absolutely not worse than Teresa's Batch. This is exponentially better than Teresa's Batch was. Yeah, the oak is it, it definitely present on the nose. I think that there is a lot of it on the nose. I like the darker notes. I love the kind of leather and uh, uh, tobacco notes that are coming through. Um, the man, but the oak on the nose again. I know that it's a little bit younger when it comes to when it comes to bookers, and the proof isn't necessarily as high as it as it normally is with a Booker's release, but I think that it does it just... I think that this is a good midpoint for Booker's releases. I think what's important, too, is that... It, it, and, and it... Look, there may be some hype over the the center cut. Again, the center cut of the warehouse, but... I, I really do think that this is a good indication that that is not a bad inclination to take on. Um, but And there's some brown sugar in the nose, too. I mean, of course, there's some caramel. There's some um, some vanilla on there, too. But it... it takes a little bit of a back seat while still complimenting and understanding um, the darker notes that are present as well. But Second sip is really caramel heavy. Really, really caramel heavy. Um, while not sacrificing some of the some of the other notes that I was alluding to originally. I'm kind of getting a little bit of a, a more herbal note, kind of like an herbal tea that's popping up as well. But I think that it complements the rosiness. It complements the oakiness. It complements everything to a point where I I really don't I don't find it off putting. I don't mind it. I think that it's one of the, the the better notes to kind of tie everything else together. I like it a lot. The finish is where most everything tends to coagulate and become something that I, I really do enjoy. I think that this is one of the this is one of the best bourbons I've had in a long time. It's deep, it's flavorful, it's um I I I think that this is a really fantastic pour. I really, really do. Um, <laughs> Clifton wants this batch too. Well, that I think you can get it. I I think that this is going to be a high ranking Booker's batch for me. So uh, let's go through it. I know that we're kind of in overtime here on the stream, but I had stuff I had to take care of, man. Can't I can't you know, ended early. So the nose, I am going to give, I'm going to give it a four. I think that, um, actually I'm going to give it a 3.5. I think that it is overly dominant when it comes to the darker notes without kind of presenting what it, 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 it has. If you peek into some of the lighter, more floral, sweeter notes as well. So, um, it's it's 
really good. I don't think that it's great because it doesn't, it just doesn't have the depth to it that I think the palette does. Palette, though, I'm going to give the palette a 4.5. I think the palette is absolutely exquisite. Um, this is... I, I am looking forward to seeing how this palette evolves and changes and becomes something that I didn't even really expect or think of when I, when I was considering what this bourbon could be. So I'm going to, I'm going to give it a five. Um, so what's that put me up to? That puts me up to an eight. Um, finish while the flavors on the finish are really good i don't necessarily believe that the it it like i said it ties everything together but it's not the most exciting finish um i'm actually also going to give the finish 3.5 um, so that brings me up to a 12.5 price. Considering what you get with some other cast strength releases, what you get with some other, um, bookers releases, I think that this is probably about a four. Um, I, I don't see why you shouldn't pick up this bottle. Um, 65 to 80 bucks. This is in the pocket. I think it's really in the pocket. So I'm going to, I'm going to give it overall a 16.5 out of 20. This is a definite recommend for me. Um, if you can find it for sure, go and buy it, but it's, I, I can't, I can't imagine that I won't buy another bottle of it, which sounds wild. Um, yeah, this is great. This is a really, really um, great bottle. Yeah. Well, thank you all so much for hanging out this week. Well, really, this Thursday, out of the week of streams, uh, we got one more live stream left tomorrow night. I'm debating over how to do that one. Um, but we will... I'll, I'll let you know tomorrow on social media. Thank you so much, though, for being here for this live stream. If you would like to follow up with me personally on social media, I am at PeterRitter1492. Um, if you would like to follow up with the show, it is at my bourbon pod on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, let's see what else. Bourbonshop.thrillist.com is where you can find all of the apparel and merch for the show. We're going to be having a sale coming up here very, very soon. Leave a five-star rate and review on iTunes. That helps everybody else to find the show if they have not done so just yet. Uh, let's see. Like, share, comment, subscribe if you have not done so already on this YouTube video. That really does help us out. It's super important. Uh, what am I missing? Uh, I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, join the Facebook group. Uh, this is my bourbon group over on Facebook. Just search for it, and you'll get to be a part of it, uh, especially if you listen to the show. It's great. Uh, and then finally, patreon.com slash bourbon podcast for as little as a dollar a month. You can become a patron of the show. You are going to be getting uh, two, count them two, bonus episodes here coming out very, very soon. Um, probably before the end of next week, if not sooner. So... Definitely check that out. Thank you all so much for being here. This has been a fantastic live stream. I have enjoyed the crap out of being here with you on this Thursday night. One more night left. One more night left in the week of live streams. And that's tomorrow night. It's going to be fun. It's going to be wild. I'm excited for it. Thank you all so much. I will see you tomorrow night. But until then, I'm Perry, and this is my bourbon podcast live stream. <laughs>